I know what you're thinking, and you're thinking, what? A midweek video? You lucky people. <laughs> Good morning, friends. Um, it's actually Friday today. I'm helping my friend move. I'm helping Matt move. Um, but I am going to a little job first. I thought I'd bring you along with me. Um, but I also wanted yeah. to discuss to anybody that's um, part of the UK Locksmith Hub, you might have seen the thread. Uh, Lee Kimberley put up about asking advice on what key safes people use and a lot of people said the Burton XL uh, I myself use the Burton XL for a high security option um, When the, when the customer is happy to pay for it because they because they're not cheap um, but on there I actually at the time I thought only um, Gav was the only person that I knew that had actually decoded one and I've since found out that Brian James has done it and he's also helped Seth uh, decode one. But they're not the only one, you know. I've spent hours uh, testing, just, just sitting there trying to find the technique on how to decode these. And I finally found it. Um, I had Sarah and Cody, my stepson, um, when I finally cracked it, I was like, oh my God, right. So I got them, basically, Sarah and Cody, to, I showed them how to how to change the code, put all the back back on and, and lock it back up. And I managed to decode it and then they did it again. I just wanted to make sure it weren't a fluke. Then did it again. And I've actually got it down to quite, quite quick now. Um, so yeah, but I'm not gonna give it away because these guys that I've been asking haven't wanted to tell me, which is fair enough. Um, I've asked Gav, I've asked Brian, um, you know, Seth's asked me to keep it to myself, so I'm going to do that. I'm not going to let anybody know how, how it's done. Um, because obviously these guys um, do courses on how to how to decode these key safes. So yeah, but I'm just really chuffed. And like I say, I spent, so not last night, so not on Wednesday night, I spent about five hours doing all different things possible to try and work out how to decode it. Got went to bed all frustrated. But um, but yeah, last night, um, which was Thursday, the day I got back from um, doing the bump day, uh, the, the bump keys uh, course. Um, yeah, sat down, had a chat with Sarah for a bit, and then got it back up because I took it, took it with me. Danny, to be fair, Danny Gardner was very close. Um, that's all I'm going to say. Danny Gardner was very close to actually solving it. Um, but yeah. Uh, I got it back out of the van and managed to crack it last night whilst sitting in front of the TV, which I was very, very chuffed about. I'm actually going to a job next week, probably Tuesday, where um, a lady, uh, a customer that I've done loads of work for over the years from when I, when I was back a carpenter, um, but I've, I've more recently done some work for her. She's got one of these Burton XL key safes and her husband uh, passed away, sadly five years ago uh, I think it was about five years ago four or five years ago um, and he knew the code to the key safe but uh, my customer didn't his wife didn't so um, I can now go out there and have a good attempt at decoding it so I'm really looking forward to that so yeah we're going to try and do that early part of next week so I'll, I'll record that but I won't show you the technique no 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 my friends you've got to put in the time like I had to I'm going to collect some keys from a property management company and then got to go over to Kemp Town to look at a communal door where the all the tenants are saying that their keys are starting to get a bit sticky and they're, they're concerned they're going to get locked out. So we're going to go and take a look at that. Possibly needs, needs a new cylinder and will possibly need a load of keys cut. But we will see. Right, let's get there and have a look. Right, so this is the problem with the cylinder. It's just quite difficult to get in. So once it's in, it's, it's, it's turning both ways all fine. So it, it possibly just needs an overhaul. So I'll give it a good spray up now and see if that makes a difference. Um, 
If not, we might need to change the cylinder, but we'll see. I'll try and overhaul it and that'll save changing all the keys. All right, there we go, guys. Very quick little overhaul. That's working lovely now. And that's working. I've recommended to the uh, the guys that I've, I'm doing this for that the nut latch has changed. It's got a crack in the case just there. Um, there's some weird sort of screws going through behind the night latch um, for whatever reason. It's almost like packing it out. And also the, the snib's still active and this is a um, this is a common way for some flats. So that shouldn't be active. So I've made them aware of that. And I've just tightened up the keep as well because this was all loose. That back part of the uh, electric stripe was loose and these screws were loose as well. So, But we are done. And it is all working. Just test that again. Yeah, it's much better. It's nice. Right, <clears throat> I've been helping my friend. Um, he's moving today, so um, I just had to go and help him fill some holes and that from, from where they put pictures and stuff up like that. But um, I'm on my way home, but I've just had a phone call from uh, a girl who's locked out of her flat um but her dad has attempted to get her in um and she's just sent me a picture of what he's done which i'll put there uh so he's attempted to mickey mouse it um but hasn't done a full job by the looks of it so Let's see what we got when we get there. Right, that's that lady in. Um, yeah, she, sorry, her dad had Mickey Mouse it, attempted to Mickey Mouse it. He was nowhere to be seen, by the way. Um, so left his daughter there to deal with it. Uh, he's attempted to Mickey Mouse it, but he's only driven, drill, drilled through the cylinder and then bent all the screws up behind it. He hasn't even, he hasn't screwed, he hasn't, sorry, he hasn't drilled the screws out. Um, so yeah, it was all just a bit loose. Um, no way I could drill the screws out because it was just moving everywhere. Um, so in the end, I got a hammer and managed to um, hammer the screws down uh, and then um, drill for the snib, and we got in. But her dad, apparently, the supersonic locksmith is gonna replace the lock so I've told her I'm on standby if needed but um, uh, apparently the, the dad's gonna do it so all good good morning my friends it is Saturday morning I'm on my way to Uckfield which is north of Brighton about half an hour 35 minutes out of that um, guy called me late last night to say that he's locked his uh, car keys in his 2005 uh, Volkswagen Polo so he was happy to wait till this morning and so we're going up there now <coughs> go and get that open um, and then I'm back to Hove to look at a I think it's a composite door this is why you should never trust what customers say because uh, I spoke to him yesterday on the phone and he's saying oh, I'm having trouble with my, with my with my lock on the on the door. So I asked him all the usual questions, okay, do you know what type of door it is? Uh, is it wood, plastic? He said it's wood. I said, okay. Um, so how many locks have you got on there? He said, just one. So okay, so is it sort of chest height? Do you know if it's a Yale type lock? He said, yes. So great. I said, can you send me some pictures over? Um, and just to give me an idea and I'll see you in the morning and uh, he sent it over and it's a uh, it's hard to tell actually whether it is a timber or composite door there's a uh, there's a full multi-point lock on there so um, yeah he, he said oh the door's knackered the lock's knackered it needs uh, needs a new lock so I don't know what I'm gonna find when I get in there it could just be adjustments uh, but we will see we will see but yeah, let's go and get this uh, this polo, the keys out of this polo, and then um, back down to Hove. Alright, here we are guys, so just got here, so we'll give this a go. 
See if we can get this open for the fella. The keys, annoyingly, are just there on the boot. On the uh, parcel shelf, rather. Alright, we've got it picked, but the door is not opening. The boot's not opening. Try the other way or try the door. There we go. Windows are open. Doors open. Doors open, so we can now go over to the back of the car and get the guys a key. Beautiful. Right, that's that polo sorted. Um, yeah, as you can see in the video, I actually um, tried the boot first. I'm, I don't pretend to be any kind of uh, expert at auto or whatsoever. Um, I carry a few uh, picks that I can use to get into people's cars. So um, don't crucify me for trying the boot, knowing that if you know that it wouldn't have worked, I didn't know that. So yeah, I thought I'd try the boot first as basically the uh, the keys were in the boot and you could see them on the parcel shelf. Uh, but yeah, obviously it didn't work. So, um, but pick the boot and, and the actual door really quickly. Um, so it was nice. Uh, he did say that he had a recovery uh, company. Don't know who, but um, I know the AA, I think, and possibly the RAC, um, you know, they, they, they carry a few picks um, but he wasn't able to do it and he wasn't able to air wedge it either um, but he's actually bent the guy's door as well um, he showed me this morning um, that there's a bit of a gap now where where he tried to air wedge it and get in but it was it was deadlocked so that didn't work I had a call on my way up here so I didn't have a call I had a message come through via checker trade that somebody was locked out in Lewis and I was in Lewis at the time phoned them and they didn't answer um, so I've just phoned them back now because I'm coming going back that way and they found somebody else called Andrew didn't know there was another Andrew in my hood who is a locksmith who is this Andrew make yourself known right let's get to Hove and look at these uh, door adjustments Okay, what we're doing here guys is this uh, wing house mechanism is very dry, very um, starting to rust. Again, we're right by the seafront just down the road there. So um, but what we're gonna do for this customer is we're gonna give everything a bit of an overhaul. It's working, but it's just a little bit. It's just not working very smooth. So we're gonna give it all a bit of an overhaul. And we're also changing the inside to a thumb turn. Okay, so we've got the thumb turn on there. Um, I've given it all a, a spray up in the inside the gearboxes and everything. Uh, giving the keeps a bit of a spray. I'm going to give the keeps a bit of an adjustment because there's quite a lot. You see that quite a bit of slop in the door. Um, so yeah, I just want to see if there's any any movement in that. Um, and at the moment as well, the door has to be pulled back for it to actually engage uh, with everything. So, yeah, I want to just see if I can get it just to close, a little bit closer to that door stop if I can, just to help with the draft and stuff. Right, there's nothing I can do. These I just aren't budging. Um, none of these. So, it is what it is. So, there is a bit of a bit of slop in the door. We could put a draft that's glued on down here, butt that up against the door, and that would take a bit of that out, actually. So I might just suggest that to the, the customer, see what he wants to do. But for today, we are done. There's a little goodwill gesture, I just <coughs> GT85, all these hinges in this gate. It was really squeaky, but now it's working like a dream. Like brand new. Right, that's that job done. I'm going back home. Um, I noticed just as I was um, leaving, the reason why there's so much spring in there, um, I was talking to him about putting the draft excluder around, um, like I did on that last job actually, um, on last week's video, uh, the brush one. Um, and as I was doing it, I noticed that the, the actual framer on the inside, uh, all the way around, has got a groove for, uh, a draft excluder like a rubber one but it looks like it's never been put in 
which is why there's so much bounce in that door. Um, so yeah, I've said to him about, about a draft excluder going on there. Um, so yeah, I'm going back home now. What's the time? Uh, 10.40. Sarah's out doing a 20 mile run, which is her last big, I say big training run. It's the biggest training run she's got to do before the marathon. She's still got to do a 12 miler next week. Um, which is incredible in itself. It's just under half a marathon, isn't it? But uh, <clears throat> yeah, she's doing a 20 miler today. I don't think I've even driven 20 miles today. <laughs> Bless her. So she'll be back about lunchtime. I think she said about 12.30 she'll be back, which is the exact time that Liverpool kick off on the telly. I forgot to tell her that. Oh well. Um, I'm sure she'll just want to collapse and have a bath anyway, so we should be good. Um, right. Uh, if anything else comes in today, I'll try and take you along with me. But if not, see you guys Monday. Back out on the road. It's still Saturday. Just about to settle down with Sarah uh, to, to watch a film on the on the sofa. But she uh, she just got back from her run. Bless her and had a bath and that. And um, she done it. Twenty miler. What's a legend? Uh, but yeah, she's knackered now. Uh, but I've just had a call from a guy who. Um, has said that he went out when he come back he uh upbc door went to lock it and he heard something drop um and now he can't open the door so it sounds like a gearbox problem um so i'm just on my way there and gonna go and have a look and hopefully get this sorted for him he did say it's an old uh, a very old door um, so I'm hoping that I've got something that will, uh, that will work. I'll try and record what I can. Okay, so here we are. So the top's all completely free, as you can see. And it's just the bottom, so we'll get access and see what's going on. Right, so we've got in, guys. Um, doesn't appear to be anything wrong with the mechanism. Everything, the little chute bolt there is coming out. Everything's working here. It's a really old Union Monarch monarch system so that's all working and the top one's working as well now the noise that i think the customer heard was there's a little packer just behind here that i've just put back in i've just slid it in i need to go and get a screw but that was on the deck down there and i think that's what was actually jamming the door so i go to the van get a little screw and put that in and then we'll give it all a test Right, so I've given all this a bit of a spray up, but uh, these are the points that, that's the top, uh, bottom of the bolt, top of the bolt, bottom of the latch, top of the latch, and the bottom of the latch is lower than that point there. And the same with the bolt, the bottom of the bolt is lower than that. So if when I try the door, it's not, not latching at all so and they're very very old hinges uh no adjustment on these so um i'm just going to drop that down and then test it and then we'll test test the uh where the bolt goes in at the top then and where it goes in down there and we'll give it all a good test yeah i've just marked the top and bottom as well and they're all out as you can see there's the bottom of my bolt there and that you can see it's actually been banging on that and the top one you can even see a little groove there but if you was to that's the bottom there i mean it's right on there so we're just we're just going to move these down a fraction move it all down and try and get it all working for this guy just noticed as well that the actual cylinder is loose so we'll take the face plate off and try and tighten that up as well and he's got a problem with the handle here. Um, I'm gonna try and fix that as well. The retaining screw was actually quite loose, so that's now that's now tightened up, so we can get the face plate back on. And there we go, we're done. So that's all shut in, latching. Now it wasn't latching before. That's locked. Lovely. I've, I've uh, secured the handle as well. Um, this is broke along around there, so I've put a dab of mitre fix either side and then got some pliers and, and, and clamped that together. And it seems to be holding really well. Uh, secured the cylinder, giving it all some GT85. Um, moved all the keeps so they're now in line. 
and this one is done. We will just try it actually because I haven't done this yet from the outside. Make sure that it's all working. There we go, it's locked. And yeah, well done. And there we go. Um, he was extremely happy. I basically quoted him on the, the phone. I said to him, I like, I like to be as transparent as I possibly can. So I quoted him for uh, a new gearbox if it needed it. I didn't know the mechanism at the time, but I quoted him for a new gearbox, quoted him for a mechanism, strip, um, a universal if I wasn't able to fix what was there. Um, I quoted him for some new handles if, if needed. Uh, but do you know what? It was literally the, uh, like I say, the. The packer had dropped out. He said he heard something drop. And most of the time you think, ah, oh, something's just come out the gearbox. But uh, yeah, it was just that little packer. So we got in, we got it fixed. He's happy, I'm happy. Everyone's a winner. Right, Saturday afternoon. So I've just watched Liverpool get beat by bottom of the table, Bournemouth. After beating Man United 7-0 last week, we're going to lose to Bournemouth. Not a happy bunny. Um, but there you go. That's Liverpool for you. So inconsistent at the moment. Why am I talking about football? See you later. Right, good morning, my friends. It's Monday morning. Um, I've just had a call from a customer that I'm not going to go to. Um, he's locked out of his flat. Uh, I say just had a call. It was uh, about half past six this morning. It's now half past seven, actually. Yeah, I had a phone call this morning at half past six whilst I was still snoozing. And guy had locked himself out of his flat. So <clears throat> I quoted him 85 pounds. And he kind of, I could tell he was umming and ah in. Um, I said, look, if you want me to come, please just text me the address and I'll head out straight away. So nothing. I had a shower, come back, and he, he dropped, called me. So I called him back, and this is about 20 minutes later now. So I called him back and said, um, so I just had a missed call from you, and he said, yeah, what's your absolute best price? So I said, my absolute best price is 85 pounds to get you back in non-destructively. You'll be able to get your keys when you're back in your, inside your flat and they'll work. Don't have to drill anything. And he went, I'll need your absolute best price. I said, look, just, just you've obviously been calling around um, to get other prices, because you, you originally called me 20 minutes ago, and you can't find anyone else. 85 pound is my best price anyway, and that's it. I said, but if, you're, if you wanna call around and see if you can get it done cheaper, then feel free. Uh, and I haven't heard back. So I'm wondering if he's now called a 49 pound locksmith. So today, anyway, we've got, um, we've got a deadlock to fit in Brighton. Then we've got a deadlock and a night latch, a high security ERA night latch to fit in Hove. Um, and then back to Brighton to just fit a new cylinder for a customer that I've done some work for before. Um, yeah, and that's what we're doing today. So you can come along with me. Right, we are we're taking it out already. Replacing this union, just doing a literally swap over. Don't know, it's good to see they've got the ERA up there. Pretty standard, beautiful. But yeah, get this one in. Right, I'm here. Um, I just don't like light for light, that's all working. Okay, they are nice, these unions. Lovely locks. And we've changed the keep as well. Beautiful, well done. Right, so, changing this old leggy. Changing the deadlock as well. Uh, we're gonna keep it, this is the one I quoted, that we was, we quoted to move the, the nut latch a bit higher, um, just to give it a bit more of a spread, because it is quite low there. Um, but they wanna keep it where it is, which is fine. So yeah, just gonna change that. 
change that. And we need to plane a bit at the bottom of the door because it's rubbing, rubbing quite bad there. Um, and as you can see, the door's still not shut. So we're gonna give that a bit of a plane up as well. Lock is in, the scutcheons. So, that's that lovely jubbly. So now, <coughs> I've got to tackle that and get that bad boy off. Okay, so that's the escutcheon fitted. Um, on the back, what I've had to do, um, where the old uh, night latch was, they actually cut it into the into the door, so that shape was cut out. So what I've done here, I've just put a couple of packers uh, behind the plate there, um, just to stop that from sinking in and give it a bit of support. Um, yeah, just a couple of grey packers like that, window packers, uh, and that all, uh, and obviously just screwed through them to hold them in so should be good to cut the tail piece and try this in right so that's the night latch on a little tiny there's, there's an old deadlock here i didn't even notice it before um tiny little bit of timber fell out of there so i'll put a little bit of decorated cork in there when we're done but that's the 40 mil night latch on so working i'll also run a bit of decorated cork down there that's where the old night latch was a little gap um so yeah i've just got a mark up for the keep now get that on Right guys, we're done. Night latch. Deadlock, it's all done. Beautiful. Should test it from the outside. <clears throat> it's closing nice. It's locked. And unlocked. And we're in. And it's working both ways how it should and it's popping out how it should so yeah we're all done right i hope you've enjoyed the video guys um i will be back sunday should have enough content for then but uh just before we go um you remember a couple of videos ago i mentioned about the the new sticker wall so we've got lee hobson fortified locksmiths in leeds there we go you will be going up there, my friend. And this is this was <laughs> this was the envelope it come in. Look at that. YouTube sensation. I'll take that. Thank you, Lee. And then we've got another one <clears throat> from Roy Salmons. Now, um, Roy works for or yeah, uh, Specialist Children's Trust, SCT UK, uh, serving children with special needs in Uganda, East Africa. So let's support that. Roy, you're a legend, also going up there. And thank you very much for sending them through. Any of you other guys, you want a little shout out and a sticker up there? Drop me a message and I'll, well, you just send me a dress. Tell you what, send it to there. YouTube sensation, please. 45 Orchard Gardens Hove, BM3 7BH. Lovely. Send me your stickers and you can have a little shout when we get up there. Right, thanks guys. Um, as always, if you've enjoyed the video, give it please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you don't subscribe to the channel, please subscribe. It really helps. And any nice comments as always. See you Sunday. Love you all guys.